So how does gastropexy prevent the recurrence of GDV? Let's discuss. Incisional gastropexy is started by creating a 4 to 5 incision through the transversus abdominis muscle, 2 to 3 centimeters caudal to the last rib, and 3 to 4 centimeters from the midline abdominal incision. You must be careful to observe these distances to avoid cutting the diaphragm. A seromuscular incision of the similar length is made on the stomach antrum. Make sure you only cut through the tunica serosa and muscularis. You must not penetrate the stomach wall. The incision in the gastric wall must be the same length with the incision you made on the abdominal wall. The position of the incision is outlined in these images. The cut edges of the transversus abdominis muscle is then sutured to the cut edges of the antral muscle. A 3O monofilament synthetic slow absorbable suture material is deemed appropriate to hold both tissues together. The sutures must engage a generous bite in the smooth muscle of the stomach wall. A larger bite in the stomach wall than the in the body wall is preferred because there is much more collagen in the abdominal wall than in the stomach wall. Thus, the sutures will hold a little bit better in the body wall than in the stomach wall. The dorsal incision is sutured first followed by the ventral incision. Each suture bite through the stomach wall must not penetrate the lumen. Once the suturing is complete, the sutures are tied together at the end of the incisional gastropexy. No further sutures are necessary to encourage a secure closure. The presence of two incisions healing side by side creates a mature fibrous connective tissue scar. Make sure that there is no evidence of twisting or extraluminal obstruction once you are finished. Check the stomach again for its orientation. Assess the gastropexy site and then lavage the area with warm saline. Assess the spleen for any active hemorrhage. In general, the spleen is extremely large in a patient with GDV. However, splenomegaly is not an indication for a splenectomy. Suction off all fluids and do a gauze sweep through all quadrants of the abdomen to make sure no gauze sponges are left. The abdomen is then closed in a standard three-layer method. GDV is severely painful to the animal. Postoperatively, you should assume this pain is still there, maybe even worse. Analgesia must be regularly given every four hours if it is given as a bolus. In severe cases, an FLK continuous rate infusion is indicated. I hope you still remember what FLK stands for. Fluid therapy must be maintained and potassium supplementation may be considered for patients presenting with hypokalemia. Proton pump inhibitors such as pentoprazole and omeprazole are indicated for the next 7 to 10 days. ECG monitoring should be done for the first 24 to 48 hours post-operatively to see if any GDV cost arrhythmias persist. In severe cases wherein the gastric decompression was not done immediately, chance of mortality is higher due to persistent hypotension, higher risk of peritonitis, sepsis, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. These are higher in patients who had gastric dilatation for more than six hours before treatment was done. I will end the topic of gastric dilatation and volvulus with two reading assignments. Number one is an overview of the acute gastric dilatation volvulus in dogs, which includes all the details that I was not able to discuss within this lecture. And number two would be the other method of gastropexy, which is the belt loop gastropexy for GDV. Thank you, and I'll see you in our next topic.